Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. I want to encourage you as we continue this series of powerful prayers of the Bible, there is power when we pray. Say that with me. Say, there is power when we pray. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10 says that Jabez called upon the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border and that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from harm so that it might not bring me pain. And God granted what he asked. And God granted what he asked. Father, we come to you today in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you that faith would arise in this room today. That, Lord, as we hear the word of God, that as we hear the power in the word of God, that as we go throughout this service, God, that mothers who are giving up on their kids, God, that faith would arise in them to keep on moving forward. That those who have sickness in their body that are giving up God, that they would have the faith to continue moving forward. God, I thank you that as we ask that you answer our prayers. And we thank you for this things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So those of you who might know me a little bit better, if it's not your first time seeing me today, first of all, my name is Pastor Josh. And one of the roles that I have here at Family Church is the role of human resources. Everybody say. So human resources is one of those things that when the person in HR requests to meet with you, there's kind of two R's. The first R might be a good R. You're getting a raise. I go to HR and I get a raise and that's great. And the second R is not the good R. It is the R that stands for get your resume ready. Get that resume nice and updated because this is not going to work out much longer. And one of the roles that I have in HR or in human resources is that it is my role to inform people of their benefits. Everybody say benefits. And what I do in this role of HR and in notifying the people of their benefits is I'll let you know, here's some of your benefits. Here's how you go about using those benefits. But I'm also saying, here's some of the regulations in our state. Here's some of the systems that come with being a part of our staff, with being a part of our team. Just this past Tuesday, I spent over an hour on the phone with this lady named Laura, and we're going through the employee handbook word by word by word, making sure that everything is done in best practices. But here's the problem with me doing human resources. There's about 35 pages of material that I need to communicate to new employees, and guess what? I ain't that smart. I ain't going to remember 35, 35 uh, pages worth of material. So the best way for me to consistently show people and to teach them what rights and what benefits and what rewards they have as an employee is in employee handbook. Everybody say employee handbook. And the only job of this employee handbook is to notify employees, here are the rights that you have. Here are the systems that you have access to. Here's the way that you understand how to operate on this team. At this point, I've spent over three hours on the phone with this lady, Laura, line by line, and we still go on and on and on. Within this employee handbook, we lay out all of the benefits. Say that again. Say benefits. All of the benefits that employees have. For example, you might not know this. In New York State, if you are a full-time employee, the second that you clock in for the first time, you immediately begin to accrue PTO or sick time. The very first day you start to work, you are already accruing that sick time. Now, some of you are looking at me like, I what? 
Yeah, some of you need to go talk to HR because you have access to that benefit. And no matter how many times I make this clear, especially when there's a new employee, there's going to be a moment where maybe their kid gets sick or they have a doctor's appointment. And I've already outlined, according to the handbook, you have access to these benefits. And they'll knock on my door and they'll say, uh, uh, hey, Pastor Josh, um, my kid, they're kind of sick. Is it okay if, if I use some sick time to take them to a doctor's appointment? You know what my response is going to be? According to the handbook, you have access to certain benefits. And one of those benefits you have access to is your sick time. So you're coming to me to ask me for something that's already yours. So the nature of this handbook says if it's in the handbook, it's already yours. Everybody say, if it's in the handbook, it's already mine. And as an employee, you have access to this handbook. So somebody in the audience, if you came into my office to ask for sick time, first I'm going to be like, how would you get back here? You don't even work here. And second of all, I'm going to say, no, you do not have access to this handbook because you are not a part of this team. Everybody say, it's in the handbook. So when you join our team, it's almost like you're becoming a part of our heritage. Everybody say heritage. And the word heritage is derived from the word inheritance, which means that by virtue of your position, you have access to certain rights. So by virtue of filling out the paperwork and joining to the team, you now have a heritage or certain rights that are outlined in this employee handbook. It's not about the amount of power that you have coming in. It's all about your position. There are blessings that come with a position. There are blessings that come with a heritage. And you might be asking yourself, what does this have to do with the prayer of Jabez? What does a heritage or position have to do with this prayer of Jabez? First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10, it says that Jabez called upon the God of Israel. The God of who? The God of where? He calls on the God of Israel. And another name for Israel in Scripture is the children of Israel. And Jabez calls upon the God of Israel, and he says, Oh, that you would bless me, enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me. Oh, God, that you would keep me from causing pain. And then it says that God grants what he asks. So Jabez calls upon the God of Israel, and he prays this. I want to call it a run-on prayer. This is like a run-on prayer. When I was in English class in sixth grade, and I'd be writing an essay, instead of using periods to break up my ideas, I just put comma, 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 comma. And my English teacher would circle like a whole paragraph with, a red, with red ink and say, this is a run-on paragraph. Jabez prays this run-on prayer. He says, bless me, enlarge my border, that your hand might be with me, keep me from harm, that it might not bring me pain. And God grants this crazy run-on prayer. And what does the idea of a heritage have anything to do with this scripture? We have to go to verse 1 of this passage to see the context because there are four tiny words in this passage that make a massive declaration about the position that Jabez held. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 1 says these four small words, the sons of Judah. The sons of Judah. In other words, the heritage of Judah, the lineage of Judah. And being a part of the heritage says as a result of your position, you have access to certain benefits. And I wonder if powerful prayers are one of the benefits that we have access to. Believe it or not, the lineage of Judah is actually the lineage of Jesus Christ. 
and for Jabez to be one of the sons of Judah, to be in the heritage of Judah, it means that he had access to the God of Israel. And because he had access to the God of Israel, he prays this crazy one-on prayer. And what does God do? He grants what Jabez asks. We understand that Jabez was in the heritage of God's people known as Israel. And along with this heritage came certain rights. Along with this heritage came the right to pray to the creator of the heavens and the earth. As a, being a part of the children of Israel, Jabez could pray this crazy, crazy run-on prayer, and God answers it. I want to ask today, are there any sons and daughters of the king in the room today? Is there anybody in this room that has the same access that Jabez had when he prays this crazy prayer? Is there anybody in the room that has something that if they would just ask that God would grant what you ask today? This is what it means to serve the God of Israel. We see in verse 10 that he calls upon the God of Israel. This is a declaration that Jabez has access to the one that can do the things that he can't. That he has the access to the way maker. The one that even when he can't see it, that he's moving on his behalf. And with access to this God of Israel, he prays this beautiful prayer. He says, oh God, that you would bless me and enlarge my border. When he says, bless me, he's saying, may your divine favor be involved in my life. May your divine favor be involved in my life. There's been times in my life when I've had the favor of people that I served under. I've had the favor of people that were responsible for me. And having that favor, it opened up doors that I could never open up on my own. Having that favor made ways when there was no way that I could ever do things on my own. And we're talking mere humans. What would divine favor look like in your life today? What would it look like for the God of Israel, for his favor to be involved in your life today? He continues this prayer. He says, after he's asked for his divine favor, he asked God to enlarge his territory, which literally means multiply my territory. Now, if we took two numbers, a thousand and a thousand, and we added them together, what would we get? So about five people said 2,000. The rest of y'all like, I ain't going to get caught saying the wrong answer upon all these people. Mm-mm. I'm going to let the math wizards do that one. It's 2,000. But if we multiplied those same two answers that we got, it's the difference between 2,000 and 1 million. That is the type of prayer that Jabez prays. He says, multiply my border, and God grants it to him. God grants what he is asking. And as we look on to the last part of the prayer, Jabez says, oh, that your hand might be with me that you would keep me from harm so that it might not bring me pain. And you read this and you say, why is Jabez praying about not causing pain? He's asking for all of these things. Then at the end, he's praying that he wouldn't cause pain. You see, the name Jabez was given to him by his mother. And the name Jabez, it means when you look at the definition, this child caused me pain when I gave birth. So Jabez is asking God that he would not cause pain because his name is a reminder of his past. His name is a reminder of the pain that he caused to another. Jabez, you better come inside and do these dishes. Reminder of the pain that he caused. Jabez, you need a pow pow? What I tell you about being mean to your sister? Jabez, come and change this laundry over. 
Every single time he hears the name Jabez, it's a reminder of the pain that he caused. And even in this prayer of faith to God, we see the insecurities of Jabez begin to rise up. And some of you here today believe that you cannot be insecure and in faith at the same time. And I want you to understand that faith is not the absence of insecurity. Faith says in the middle of this insecurity, I'm going to call out to the God of Israel. For he can do the things that I cannot. His entire life with this name Jabez is a reminder of the pain that he caused in a single moment in the presence of the God of Israel removes that from him. A single moment, God redefines him. He grants to him what he asks. And there are some of us here today that we might even have a greater pain than Jabez had. Because there's a pain that comes with causing pain to others. There's a pain that comes with saying, God, I hope they can forgive me for what I did. But I think some of the hardest pain is, God, may I forgive me for what I did. God, may I forgive me for the pain that I caused in my children. God, may I forgive me for the pain that I caused in my family. Sometimes it's a lot easy, it's a lot easier to forgive others than to forgive ourselves for doing the same things. But in this story, it's not a sad story. Because even though Jabez might have caused a lot of pain when he was born, he had access to the God of Israel. And because he had access to the God of Israel, there were things that Jabez could not do on his own, but he knew the God that could do it. And because according to the employee handbook, because he was a part of the heritage, Jabez could call out to this God. And what does God do? He grants what he asks. With this heritage that he has as a son of Judah. As a descendant from Abraham, he accesses God. And you might be here today and you're saying, that's great for Jabez, but what about me? How can I apply this in my own life today? John chapter 1, verse 12, this is about Jesus. It says, but to all who did receive him, who received Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Everybody say heritage. And it says that these children were not born of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but they were born of God. In John chapter 3, this man named Nicodemus, he goes up to Jesus and he says, Jesus, what must I do to be saved? And he says, you have to be born again. And Nicodemus goes, huh? What do you mean born again? Like, I need to go back into my mother's womb to be born again. What's Jesus saying here? He's saying you have to be born again as a child of God because to be born into a family means you are now a part of the heritage. And if you're a part of the heritage of God, you have access to certain things that others might not have. He tells them you must be born again. Who here has ever, wave at me if you heard this phrase, heard the phrase a born-again Christian or a born-again believer? Why do we use this phrase born again? We're using it because believe it or not, we are accessing our heritage. To be born again means to be a child of God. You cannot be born again without a heritage. I'm going to say that again. You cannot be born again without a heritage. By virtue of being born again, it means that you have access to certain rights. And where do we find these rights? We have to go to the employee handbook. We have to look into the employee handbook. This right here is a Bible. 
And this is the handbook that God has sent to the earth that all the employees of his kingdom might realize the benefits that they have access to. And some of you are here today, you're asking God if you have access to certain things that he's given to us according to his handbook. You're asking, do I have access to peace? When God in his handbook says that the peace that surpasses understanding will guard our hearts and guard our minds. Some of you are wondering, does God talk to me? Do I have access to speak to God? When the Bible says in the book of James, if any of you lacks wisdom, ask and God will give it to you. We're asking things, we're asking for things that God has already given us access to. It's like the employee that says, hey, um, can I use sick time on this day? If they would have logged into their profile, you would have already seen that the sick time is credited to your profile. It's already under your name. What am I saying? It's already yours. But you might have to request it. You see, the things that Jabed has, I believe they were already his. But he prays this powerful prayer to God, and God grants what he requests. What's my point? Your heritage gives you access to the handbook. Your heritage gives you access to the handbook. Those who are in the family of God, the Bible says the lineage of Abraham, you have rights to those things listed in this handbook. So it brings me to this idea today. Can I pray a powerful prayer like Jabez? And God answer me. Galatians chapter 3, verse 7 through 9. Know then that it is those of faith. Everybody say faith. It is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you the nation shall be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. What is it saying here? It is saying that the true descendants of Abraham are those that place their faith in God. You see, we, many of us understand the idea of Israel, that there are those who are in the bloodline of Abraham. But the true bloodline of Abraham is not in those that were born after him. The true bloodline of Abraham, the true Israel, are those that place their faith in God. And today I want you to know that as we place our faith in God, that the things in this heritage, the things in this handbook, I want you to understand that they are yours. That by placing our faith in God, that we can receive the things that Jesus Christ has won for us today. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. His divine power, everybody say power, has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's in the handbook, now are you going to take it by faith? It's in the handbook, but are you going to take it by faith? Philippians 4.19, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. It's in the handbook. It's in your handbook. What needs in your life would go from being a need to a testament of God's faithfulness if you would reach out by faith? James 1, 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. It's in the handbook. Is there an area of your life where you need wisdom? I want to encourage you, ask today by faith. 
this all is always going to come back to faith. The first point I want to make today is that God answers your prayers. God answers your prayers. God answers your prayers. So I believe that if Jabez said, God, would you increase my territory by 1%, it would have been granted to him. If he said, God, would you increase my territory by 10%, it would be granted to him. But you see, Jabez being a son of Abraham, being in the lineage of Israel, he would hear stories as a little boy that they were running out of Egypt and they came up to this place called the Red Sea. And Jabez, there was no way for us to get across. And the Egyptians were coming to destroy us. But this man named Moses, he lifted up a staff and God made a way where there was no way. And Jabez, our father Abraham, listen to this. He was over 90 years old. And his wife was over 90 years old. And then Jabez, what happens next in this story is God goes to them. And God tells them, you're going to have a baby. And Sarah laughs at God. And then God asks Abraham this question, is there anything that is too hard for me? Is there anything that is too hard for me? And that time next year, Sarah gave birth to a baby. So if Jabez knows the story of the God that can split a sea, and the story that a almost probably great, should be a great, great grandmother can give birth, then why would he pray for a 1% increase? He says, God, that you would multiply my territory, and God grants it to him. I want to ask you, what type of prayers are you praying? Are you praying safe prayers? Or are you praying to the God of Israel that can split the seas? Are you praying safe prayers? Or are you praying like you have access to the one that would enable these two to have a baby in their old age? We say all this to say this, that we pray through the lens of faith. Say that with me. Say pray through the lens of faith. We are looking through the lens of faith as we pray these prayers. Hebrews chapter 11, it's known as the hall of faith. It says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients or those who came before were commended for. This is how the hall of faith starts. Then in verse 6, it says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to God must believe that God exists and that God rewards those who earnestly seek him. And then we go down to verse 11, and it says, by faith, even Sarah who we just talked about, who is past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him or God faithful who made her the promise. This is the moment when God says, is there anything too hard for me? And the answer is clearly no. Verse 29, by faith the people of Israel passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. You see, for the Egyptians to try to walk across that miracle on dry ground is to try to access a heritage that they were not a part of. And they could not access the things that were reserved for the people of Israel. And because of it, they were drowned. Verse 30, by faith the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. Some of you need to have faith over time. You might have faith at the beginning, but as time has gone on and as life has gone on, you've lost faith. I want to encourage you, have faith over time. This word is not dead and it is not dull. It is alive and it is active. And when you believe this word in the midst of your situation, be amazed at what God does. Verse 31, by faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. Now, what I love about Rahab 
is that she's included in the lineage of Abraham, but she did not have Abraham's blood running through her veins. She's included in the hall of faith, but she wasn't even an Israelite in terms of her bloodline. But you see, she's counted among the heritage of God's people because her faith was in God. You see, she didn't have the blood of Abraham running through her veins, but she had the faith of Abraham coursing in her heart. She didn't have the blood of Abraham in her veins, but she had the faith of Abraham in her heart today. And I want us to understand something, that the hall of faith was opened the moment that people began to put their faith in God. But I want you to know that the hall of faith is still accepting applications. That the hall of faith is still looking for people that would place their faith in God. By faith, there are mothers and chosen up in the youth group whose kids have run from God and they pray every single morning. By faith, there are people that bring over 100 people to this church. By faith, people sign up to be water baptized. By faith, the prayer team meets every single morning to pray. And I want to ask you, if you reached out to God by faith, what stories would be written? What testaments of God's goodness can you share? There are some of us here today that would look forward and see by faith the things that God is doing. But some of us are here and we say, I just got to look back two weeks ago to see the faithfulness of God. Some of you have to look back just over a year ago to see the faithfulness of God. And one of the concepts that we see in Scripture, like when the people walked across the Red Sea or when Joshua walks into the Promised Land, is that they don't just cross the river. They always go back and they grab stones to make a memorial of God's faithfulness in a moment. And some of you have stories of faith, but you need to take that story of faith and share it with those who are coming after you so that they might be encouraged by what God is doing. You see, this true lineage of Abraham are not those who share in the blood of Abraham. It's those who place their faith in God. And maybe you're here today and you say, I've never placed my faith in God. And this story would be like, like the story of Rahab, where she places her faith in God. And she becomes a part of this lineage of Abraham. If you're here today and you've never placed your faith in God, I want you to know that I've got the handbook ready for you. That there's this moment called the onboarding process where we pray what we call the prayer of salvation. And what happens in this onboarding process, it's a little bit different than what you might be used to. For our onboarding, we say, I do this, and then you fill this out, and then I'll fill out the next part, and then you fill out the next part, and then I fill out the next part, and you fill out the next part. God fills out the whole thing. When he sacrificed his son for us, and then the son rose with all authority, we have a name that is above every name. And the Bible says that those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today is going to be that moment for someone. Where somebody calls upon the name of the Lord for the very first time. And we do all this together by praying this prayer. Repeat after me. Say, dear God, I come to you today just like I am. And I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I believe that you died and you rose for me. Come into my heart, come into my life to change me and make me new. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thanks for watching today's message. My name is Pastor John Mark, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. We want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. 
The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is to take your next step in your journey. We'd love to help you do that. And you can head over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.